you're listening to short inspirations from Ralph. Helping hurting people, part three. When you're attempting to help someone who is broken or hurting or bruised, there comes a realisation that there are some things that won't change or that there is no control over, such as the behaviour of another person. So the discussion that you're having with this hurting person may relate to their own attitudes, their own boundaries. And amongst that, there are some things that can be adjusted, can change, and that's why I've earlier said to help the person design a project to achieve some of those goals. It may well be within the realm of having to forgive someone else. There's an amazing statement in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Jesus is talking and he says, However, I say to you, love your enemy. Bless the one who curses you. Do something wonderful for the one who hates you. And respond to the very ones who persecute you by praying for them. Over the years, I have often had a husband come and see me by himself about their marriage relationship and often he will talk about what's going on and what's going on with the other person and then it comes down to with that person creating a list of things that they can do within their control to help in the situation. For example when they have a disagreement with the other person, what is their behaviour like? Can that be modified? Or is there reactionary stuff going on? Some people do need to create boundaries, as I said before. And I would suggest a great book would be that of Henry Cloud's called Boundaries. That's worth a read. Often a person has a very low opinion of themselves. In other words, the issues that are happening to them, the things that are happening to them, relate to their own internal thinking and their view of themselves. And the discussion that you have with the person may relate to accepting things in their own lives that don't change, even the way that they have been created. Isaiah made this statement in Isaiah 45 9 what sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator does a clay pot argue with its maker does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it saying stop you're doing it wrong does the pot exclaim how clumsy can you be a person can find real peace when they come to grips with this, when they learn to accept God's unchangeables, things like my physical features, my mental capabilities, my family, my parents or lack of even, brothers and sisters, my gender, that's a controversial one, but it's very clear in Genesis that God made male and female. My race, my skin colour, my nationality, and even things like my ageing and lifespan. If you are a praying person as a helper and it's appropriate to pray with that person, then that's a great thing to do because our scripture does say to pray continually with all kinds of prayers. And it doesn't hurt also to pray outside of sessions before you see a person. One of the last things I'll leave you with in this session is that there may not be any immediate solution to what's going on. And so when we're praying, we sort of leave things in God's hands. We're saying, God, we don't know what to do. We're giving it to you. Again, Isaiah says, but those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. There's a great poem that I'll leave you with. As children bring their broken toys with tears for us to mend, I took my broken dreams to God 
because he is my friend. But then instead of leaving him at peace to work alone, I hung around and tried to help in ways that were my own. Finally, I snatched them back and said, God, why are you so slow? My child, he said, what could I do? You never did let go. God bless you today.